All right. Well, good morning, everyone. How about this beautiful weather outside after all of this rain? <laughs> Welcome to Guide Dog Class number 423. We're excited to have you all here. Um, at this time, I would like to invite the Girl Scouts up to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Audience attention, please stand. Color Guard attention. The flag will be coming down the center aisle and up onto the stage. The flag will be posted on the left. Color guard advance. Color Guard posts the colors. Color Guard salute the colors. Please join me in saying the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Color guard dismissed. Please be seated. All right, let's give the color guard uh, a nice big round of applause. Thank you, ladies. So before we get started with uh, introducing you to our five new graduates over here on my left-hand side, I just have a couple of groups of people that I would really like to point out and thank. Um, first group is our breeder keepers. So if we have any breeder keepers in here, can you please stand up? There we go. You know, these guys go through multiple bags of food, uh, taking these dogs on nice long walks, keeping them happy and healthy um, so that they can uh, make more of our graduate dogs that we see today. So thank you guys very much for all that you do. And I've seen a few of them around here, but I do want to point out our area leaders. Uh, if anybody is an area leader here, can you guys please stand up? Several of them in there. All right. These guys are the heart and soul. Uh, these guys give us uh, so much of their time to help support the raisers in each of their areas, working closely with our canine development team. Uh, we could not do it without you, so thank you guys for everything that you do. And at this point, I am gonna turn it over to our president, Russ Gitlin. casual today because today I started a fundraiser of my own. Uh, we're going to be doing Corpius Canine Run in Maine this year and uh, before I got here I made the mistake of sending out a group text and I had to answer like 9,000 group texts. So, but we're doing good. I'm up to $6,000 already and we're heading in the right direction. So, um, I want to say thank you for everybody coming today. We didn't know how many folks would show up today. Uh, being Easter weekend and everything, and it, we, didn't, we, didn't, we didn't do it other than we just run out of weekends to do this type of thing. So how about a big round of applause for everybody that showed up today? <laughs> I 
my pleasure to welcome you to this very special occasion. Can you imagine we're up to class 423? Greetings to everyone watching online as well. It's an honor to be standing here with you celebrating these incredible animals, their handlers, and the people who helped raise them. To arrive at a moment like today requires a great deal of sacrifice. It takes a village of selfless individuals willing to dedicate their time, their effort, and energy into training and caring for these dogs. I want to express my sincere gratitude to everyone who played a role in this process. How about a big round of applause for all you guys? I want to thank our generous donors. Without your support, none of this would be possible. It takes a lot of dog kibble to keep this place running. Your contributions have helped us provide the best care and training for these guide dogs. And for that, we are forever grateful. Next, I want to thank our amazing volunteers. Your tireless efforts and your selflessness have helped us make the difference in the lives of those in need. I mean, I had a moment to, to talk to some of the folks before we started today. And uh, it's amazing, they're on like dog three, four, five, you know, and uh, I have trouble just raising the one I'm raising now. So um, my hat's off to you guys. Good job, great job. Whether it's providing care and attention to our puppies or helping with our day-to-day -day task, your dedication has not gone unnoticed. Your kindness, your compassion have truly made a difference in the lives of these dogs and their future owners. And last but certainly not least, I want to thank our wonderful puppy raisers. You opened your hearts, your homes for these dogs, providing them with love and support and guidance. You've taught them valuable skills that have prepared them for this important job ahead of them. Your hard work and commitment have made it possible for these dogs to be successful, guide dogs, and change the lives of their future owners. These five dogs have gone through rigorous trainings and tests to become guide dogs. They have faced challenges, but with the help of our dedicated team, they have preserved, persevered, I'm sorry. So as we celebrate the hard work and sacrifice that has gotten us to this moment, we too celebrate the new life these guide dogs will bring to their new partners, a life filled with hope, independence, and opportunity. In conclusion, I want to thank each and every one of you for your contributions to this cause. Your kindness and generosity have made it possible for us to provide these guide dogs to those in need. I am filled with pride and gratitude as we celebrate the achievements of these incredible teams, and I look forward to seeing the differences they make in the world. One big round of applause for all of that. That's... Just uh, before, before we get going a little further here, I just want to take a moment. Uh, there's a special person in the audience today. Um, when I started, uh, we, me and Diane and Zach, and we, we had no clue how to run an event as far as like Las Vegas. And uh, we, got, we got a little stuck in, you know, just dealing with hotels and dealing with uh, just all the arrangements and decorations and, and figuring out whether we were spending the right amount of money and so on and so forth. So I happen to have a friend in Boston who um, I've known for a very long time who happened to just have retired and she was in the hotel industry. So I said to Diane on the phone, I'll never forget who, I was, I was in Target and she's calling me kind of freaking out about the deal. And I said, well, why don't we just call Judith and ask Judith her insight. And uh, on that phone call, I know not only got insight, but I asked her to, to, to work with us. And so for the past six years, Judith has been um, spending her year planning out the Vegas event. And it's quite an event. We have over a thousand people usually at that event. And it involves a lot. And anybody that's been there, we don't just do the same thing every year. We switch it up every year. So we give her new challenges every year. So how about, Judith, where are you? I don't even know where she is. She's somewhere. Judith's in the back there. How about a big round of applause for Judith? <laughs> Team sponsorships are our highest level of sponsorship. Today we would like to thank Miss Jane Huey for her sponsorship of Priscilla and guide dog Zofia. Ms. Huey is a long time and very generous supporter and we wish she could be here with us today so we, thank, so we could thank her in person. Hopefully she's watching the ceremony on Facebook. How about a big round of applause for Jane? We also have one puppy sponsorship to award and that is to another good friend, Sandy Bennett, and that is for her sponsorship of guide dog Anderson. Uh, since
those of you that know Sandy, she lives in Kentucky, and I guarantee you she's watching us right now. Thank you, Sandy, for the sponsorship and all the many things you do for the school, including sending us pies and candy. <laughs> and we can't forget cl our class donors. Class donors also sponsor a puppy, the <coughs> but the pup ends up being career changed. Today we'd like to thank the Neasley Family Foundation, as well as Dan and Rosalind Hudock, for their puppy sponsorship of Falcon and Phelan. How about a big round of applause? <laughs> of course, uh, we want to thank the harness sponsorships, uh, Kathy and Bob, uh, Kathy and Bob Stegman, harness sponsor for Sophia, Monica Bocamp and Douglas Doors, harness sponsorship for Sargent, and Westside Puppy Raisers Group, harness sponsorship for Wednesday. Big round of applause. <laughs> I want to remind you guys, we're, we're opening the place up again uh, June 3rd. Come for an awesome day with the family. Uh, we'll have open house. Uh, there will be puppy challenges, face paintings, service dog demos, a graduate panel of speakers, and of course, Judy Riley, her famous uh, silent auction. And not, not, he didn't put it in here, but I'm going to put it in here, is uh, the kissing booth, which is the big one, you know? So, so come one, come all. Last but not least, we want to give a special thanks to the National Charity League, San Fernando Valley Chapter, NCL's dedicated members are on hand at every graduation, providing and serving the refreshments, assisting family members and guests, and generously helping out wherever they can. Thank you to the NCL group. <laughs> can't leave out, you know, we get paid, all of us staff, but, but honestly, you can't pay enough for what they do. They're 24-7. They're um, so I want to just take a moment and thank my staff. All my staff stand up. I got quite a few here, so everybody stand up that's staff. Uh, how about a big round of applause for you guys? So I'm happy and sad at the same time. You guys don't know this, but uh, I've got a thing where I go down with Ernie every day and uh, that I'm here and I take Ernie down and we, we, we put in an area where I can run dogs down there now. So I go down and I'm a kennel tech for a little bit. And uh, I usually take quite a few of these dogs with me and there's usually about eight or nine dogs out there with me and I sit out there and pick up the poop and throw balls with them and whatever other things I need to do. Um, and in this group, I know quite a few of these dogs um, and it, that's the sad part. The happy part is I congratulate you guys. You really are gonna experience a new life. Those of you that had dogs already, you know this. Those of you that haven't had the guide dogs, I think that you're gonna find that your life is gonna change tremendously. Um, it's, it's just amazing what uh, animals bring to people and, uh, and their lives. So congratulations to that great class over there. How about it? They worked hard. They worked very hard. And around the campus, we continue to improve the campus. Those of you that, uh, that, that haven't been here in a little bit, just look around. You'll see uh, the staff works continuously to upgrade things and make things look better. We're working on a new audio-visual visual, uh, system for this area and the area outside. And I want, just want to give a big shout out and a thank you to Weldon Granger and his family. They, they gave me $100,000 to do that job. How about that? <laughs> We used to have what I called the skateboard park out front of this place. Any of you guys have been around a while, there used to be a flagpole in front of the building and then inside was all these plaques, but the kids would come and they turned it into a skateboard, skateboard park, so we had to take it down. But last week, if you look out here, out this window here, you'll look to the left uh, over near the apartment and you'll see we took all the plaques, we cleaned them up and we hung them up and it's a pretty, pretty beautiful monument. So if you get a chance at the end of today, go out there and look, there's, uh, there's, there's quite a few plaques that go back to 82, 83. Um, it's just kind of an interest in history. We're also working on a history, a history wall here at Guide Dogs. Um, Mackie's working on that now, Mackie Singer. And that's going to be, if you guys remember, the Hollywood used to be pretty, pretty involved with here and so on and so forth. It's going to be a history wall put up with all that. Uh, we have, we saved all that. We just haven't got a chance to put it back up. So that's coming. The other projects we're working on, I asked a couple of the board of directors to work on a solar project. Um, our solar bill here is about 10, I mean our electric bill here is about $10,000 a month on average, which is pretty big. 
So uh, we, we, I ask a couple of the board of directors to come in and they're handling and I'm actually not handling it at all. I just there if they got a question. But uh, we had four solar companies in this week, so we're going to go green. Um, I'm pretty sure it's going to happen. Uh, they claim they can save us quite a bit of money. So guide dogs will be green here in the very near future. So how about that? That's a good deal. With that, been on the road a lot, and things are going good. You guys are generous, and we appreciate you, and we continue doing what we're doing. We're continuing to expand. Uh, we're meeting with, uh, with, with the prisons on a daily basis and got that program going really good. I'm trying to get a copy of, uh, we had uh, a, a transportation conference, and we actually brought in, uh, you guys have heard from Patrick. Uh, Patrick was incarcerated for 29 years. And uh, Patrick's story is a moving, and he'll tell you how, uh, the prison program saved his life. And, and how did it do that? It just brings a calmness to the place and they know that if they get in trouble or anything like that, they're gonna lose their dog and, and they just really do a good job. Anyhow, he got out after 30 years and he's giving back to the world. What he does for us is he's doing a lot of volunteer. Some of these dogs that normally we'd bounce out of the program, um, he's actually taking it upon himself as a volunteer and he's bringing them home with him and he's working real hard to work out the few kinks and, and, and they're making it. We got Nash down below who was, would normally be bounced out of the program um, and he's, gonna, he's, he's done a good job. He's brought that dog into the, the position where he's going to be able to be a service dog. So how about a big round of applause for Patrick Acuna and what he's done for us. So they always tell me I talk too much. I'm going to stop in a minute, but I just want to tell you, Guide Dogs is just one of those places you can come, and it's just good, 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 good. It just keeps, keeps getting better. And uh, I appreciate you being here. And next time you come, if you can bring somebody with you, I think they get hooked pretty quick. So with that, I'm going to invite Jamie back on the stage, or am I inviting Sydney? I think I'm inviting Sydney. Hey, just, just so you know, Sid, Sid here, this was her first class that she ran herself. So big, big applause for that. And I didn't, I didn't even hear any complaints. They didn't complain at all. I don't know how much you paid them, but they didn't complain at all, so it was great. Um, listen, uh, I, I love you guys. Thank you for being part of Guide Dogs family. You are a family. You do a lot of great stuff uh, every day, 24-7, and, and we appreciate you for that. So with that, get on with the ceremony. Sid, come on up here and do your thing. Or, oh, Sean, you're doing it? Okay. Huh? You're doing the slideshow. Okay, so get the slideshow going. There you go. Thank you. This is class or class pictures. We have Carmela and Wednesday. Here's Carmela working in Burbank with Wednesday. Here's our first walks in the rain. Here's our first meets. Here's Carmela and Wednesday in Pasadena after we just rode the trains. And here's a picture of Wednesday as a puppy and as a graduate. Next we have David and Ivan. Here's David walking in San Fernando with his dog. Next we have the first meeting with David and Ivan. Here's our first walk up Glen Oaks. And here's David and Ivan walking along the platforms in Pasadena. And that's actually right in between the 210 freeway there, it's very loud. Here's a picture of David and I, or Ivan as a puppy and as a graduate. Next we have Jacob and Anderson. Yeah. 
Here's the team in Burbank walking up a very skinny sidewalk. Here's our first meeting together of Jake and Anderson. Here's again our first walk, just as it was starting to rain, I believe. And here's the team working in San Fernando. And here's a picture of Anderson as a puppy and as a graduate. Next we have Laurel and Sargent. Here's Laurel and Sargent working in San Fernando, or sorry, in Burbank. Next we have the team's first meeting. Here's Laurel and Sargent on their first walk. And here's the team in San Fernando just outside the courthouse. And here's a picture of Sargent as a puppy and as a graduate. Next, we have Priscilla and Zofia. Here's the team working in San Fernando. Here's Priscilla and Zofia walking in Burbank. Here's the team's first meet. And here's their first walk in the rain. And here's a picture of Zofia as a puppy and as a graduate. Here's Olive Glass 423. Congratulations, guys. I'd like to introduce Sydney. She's going to introduce the class. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Good afternoon, my name is Sydney Fujishiga. If you don't already know, this is my first time leading a class. <laughs> it's very excited. Um, instructing along with me uh, is Sean Childs. I would like to say a big thank you to Sean for all your guidance and uh, your wisdom through these last 21 days. You're a great wealth of knowledge for me. Uh, I also wanna thank our newest apprentices, uh, Jasmine Versalis and Annalise Mendoza. You guys did a great job in your blindfold experience and uh, helping class run smoothly afterwards too. Before I introduce the students, there are a few more people that I need to thank. Thank you to Patty and everyone at uh, Ashkenazi Development for allowing us to use your conference area for a place to rest the students in between routes and also keep them dry during those crazy rainy days. Uh, thank you to Louie, Mike, and Steve from Provider Contract Food Service for always keeping the instructors and uh, students well-fed through class. Thank you to Maisha, Chris, Jesus, and Eric from Visiting Angels for always keeping the dorms clean and running smoothly. Uh, and thank you to uh, Alicia Finesse, Missy Staten, Deb Madden, Rick, Roy Nitschke, and Shannon Curtis for being our dorm volunteers. You guys... Uh, hung out with the students and we appreciate that very much so that Sean and I can have a much needed day off. Uh, I also need to thank Mike and Greg Steinmetz as well as Patrick and Shannon Curtis for being transport uh, services for these students to and from campus. And also thank you in advance to Lexi Dreyfus for driving uh, students to LAX after graduation. One more thank you. I wanna send a big thank you to our entire staff for helping care for the dogs uh, in training while we've been in class. It's good to know that the dogs are always well taken care of. I'm happy to be standing here introducing class 423. This group of students comes to GDA from California to um, Washington DC and Canada. Their ages range from 27 to 70 years young. One student returns to GDA TLC for his second guide dog while four students are receiving their first guide dog. Over these last 21 days, these five students have learned to work uh, and manage their dogs independently, 
all to prepare them to go home to officially start their new lives together. And I am proud to say they have each mastered their teachings and are ready to take on the world. Now let's meet these teams. Uh, Carmela Clark. Carmela is 70 years young and lives in Santa Ana, California, but is originally from Philadelphia. She has three kids, six grandkids, and two great-grandkids. She is a retired social worker for the Los Angeles County Department of Social Services. She loves watching Godzilla marathons and is a huge dog lover. Carmela is receiving her first guide dog. She was matched with female yellow Labrador retriever Cross uh, Wednesday, who was raised by the Maybaum family, represented, represented today by Jason. Thank you. Okay, first of all, I'm going to thank God because he gave me another day to wake up. And at my age, when you wake up every day, you're thankful. <laughs> so, <laughs> okay, again, Guide Dogs of America, um, I don't know what to say. This has been an amazing experience. Uh, I come away with a blessing in Wednesday and uh, a lot and a lot of great people that I've met here, especially Sean and Sydney. They're the greatest of trainers, really. And I mean, they are really dedicated to their work. Um, uh, I would like to thank um, the rest of the staff. Uh, I can't think of names. Jamie, um, all the staff, in, uh, what is her name? Tani Anisha, Alicia, Aisha, okay, Maisha. So please, I got it wrong, I'm sorry. But anyway, um, and the puppy trainers, I mean, they, they do an exceptional job preparing the dogs for the training to be guide dogs and service animals. So they are to be really congratulated for the job they do, job well done. And to the rest of the staff, I, I want to say thanks to Greg for being so diligent in getting me here. He just was following up, following up until I actually got here. So Greg, wherever you are, thank you. Uh, and the rest of the staff, I can't remember names, but to Guide Dogs of America for service that you provide to the community, for those of us who need it, thank you. Next, we have David Yerkes Young. Oh, puppy race, sorry. <laughs> Getting a little ahead of myself. Thank you so much. <clears throat> Hello, everyone. I am, where should I stand? All right. Um, I'm super excited to be here today to uh, celebrate Wednesday, being matched with the new leader of Team Wednesday. Um, when Wednesday first came to our family for puppy raising, I knew three things about her. She was amazingly cute, uh, super sweet, and playful. Um, because she came to us at the beginning of the COVID lockdown, I was thinking about what we could do to expose her to other people and experiences that would help her hone her skills at listening and following directions. So I called my friends at Disney and we started having her participate in videos and interviews with me on Disney Channel where she could showcase what uh, she was learning and the wonderful work uh, being done here at Guide Dogs of America. Uh, doing these videos turned out to be a perfect opportunity for Wednesday to demonstrate her patience, ability to follow directions, and how to learn to stay on task even when distracted. Once people saw how quickly she learned her tasks and how disciplined and dedicated she was to learning her skills, I would always be asked the same question. How could you have Wednesday for over a year and then give her back? Well, the answer was simple. I knew Wednesday had a higher purpose than being just a pet. Wednesday, uh, as adorable and loving as she was with my family, was going to fulfill her destiny and join forces with an amazing person who she could be with and help make navigating the world easier. 
So I'm so proud of Wednesday and so happy she made it all the way through the program. So let's raise a glass, I mean, a Kong, <laughs> full of peanut butter, uh, to all the members of the graduating class. Congratulations. Now, David Yerkes Young. David is 70 years young and lives in Palm Springs, California with his husband, Andrew, and three small dogs. He is a retired hairdresser after 50 years in the profession. He refers to himself as a gypsy since he has lived all across the U.S. from Hawaii to Connecticut. He has his own IMDB page working on shows such as Joe vs. the Volcano and Say Yes to the Dress, or Prom Dress. David is receiving his first guide dog. He was matched with male Yellow Lab Retriever Ivan, raised by Ann Larson, represented by Ann. I, I also want to thank the donors. Oh, they're going to be sorry they gave me this. I also want to thank the donors, as well as the puppy raisers who I got to meet today. They did an awesome job. But um, I did make a few notes, but before I do that, I need to put on my reading glasses. Okay, they, told me to keep this, they told me to keep this short. I don't know if I know that word. So, you may have noticed as we walked in, I'm, I'm the grandpa of the group. I was told that from Laurel, who is the young pup of our group, or I also call him the young whippersnapper. He also calls me old man. He calls Carmela, who is up here, Tutu, which is Hawaiian for grandmother. And we're okay with these nicknames. In fact, we all have nicknames. Priscilla is Pris. Jake is from State Farm. <laughs> and Laurel is just the kid. So let me talk, tell you about some of the fun stuff. The training. Especially when Sean, Sydney, Jasmine, and Annalise would gang up on us during our campus route. Sydney was the normal one. <laughs> kind of. First was a female. Oh, Sydney would sometimes bring her dogs, especially if when we were doing distractions. First was a female French poodle. The other day was a, a female German shepherd. That's when I learned Ivan had a type. <laughs> he loved the European women. <laughs> However, I had a talk with him saying, what can you do about it? You're neutered. <laughs> Jasmine and Annalise, told you payback. Use squeaky voices like the twins from The Shining. So I named them Alexa and Alexi, who was actually the name of the twins. Their nicknames, we all got together as, they are just known as the twins. During one of our campus routes for distraction, Alexi asked Ivan if he's a dog. My unfiltered mouth opened up and my New Yorker came out and said, no, he's a cat, you dumb cow. I told you I'm unfiltered. Then there, was a, then there was yesterday when we went to Northridge. Sean loved squeaky toys to distract the dogs. Ivan and I walked by a photo place where young kids were having their pictures taken with uh, the Easter Bunny, and somebody squeaked a toy. I instantly said, damn you, Sean. <laughs> 
So this is the part where Sean's going to escort me off the stage. I'm not sure whether he's going to escort me by his elbow like he did up, or he's going to grab me by the ear as if I was a bad little kid. Again, I want to thank you for everything. And this, this is where the sunglasses really help. And bless you all. All right, now I'm going to bring up Anne. How do I follow that one? Um, I am a first time puppy raiser, so when I started this journey, I knew nothing about puppy raising. Luckily, I had a huge support group to help me. I have an amazing partner, Guy, sitting right here who supported me and Ivan through our puppy raising journey. Hannah and Carol Ann from the GDA TLC staff puppy department conducted puppy kindergarten classes online because we were during COVID. Um, and this was really helpful because I learned everything about puppy raising. I knew nothing. Um, my area leaders, Tammy New, who's here, and Joanne Russell, were always available whenever I had questions related to puppy raising, and they were very innovative and creative with our outings and obedience training during the COVID lockdown. Um, when I got Ivan, I discovered he's a very confident, fearless, and goofy puppy that loves to please. He was also very energetic, which required me to find ways to keep him busy in between training activities. During the COVID lockdown, it was very difficult to socialize Ivan, but gradually we were able to get him out in public to expose him to more people, animals, and unusual circumstances. Ivan loves to play. He especially loves to fetch and play tug of war with just about anything, and he was always up for long walks. I regularly took him on three to six mile walks just to get him tired enough to sleep. He was a great partner during all of my activities, including shopping, eating at restaurants, and running errands. He went everywhere with me, and he became my little buddy. He's a sweet Velcro dog that wants to be with his person. I knew going into this journey that it would be likely that Ivan would be turned in for training. That was what he was meant to do, and it ultimately was my goal to get him ready. But I knew it would be difficult, and it was and still is. But I'm proud of him having become a working guide dog, and I know that he has already become David's little buddy. I look forward to hearing how he and Ivan are doing in their journey together, and I wish Ivan and David the very best. Next we have Jacob Sherb. Jake is 48 years old and lives in West Hills, California. He is married to his wife, Shira, and has two children. He is an electrical engineer for Teradyne. He enjoys cooking, hiking, reading, and participating in corporate games like the 5K Run. Jake is receiving his first guide dog. He was matched with male black Labrador retriever Anderson, who was raised by Carrie Muir, represented today by Carrie. Thank you very much. It's hard to figure out where to start, but the Guide Dogs of America is its such an amazing organization. I, I feel very humbled to have this opportunity and the amount of people that uh, help out to make this run is incredible. I especially want to thank Sydney and Sean, our trainers, and the apprentices Jasmine and Annalise as well as some special thanks to Jamie and Kelsey and Russ and, uh, and to my family, Shira, and my two kids, Nathan and Simone, for their patience while I went away for three weeks, which was the longest I've ever been away from them, even though they got to visit, which was very nice. Um, this, we really got to experience a lot 
with this training going through the the rain, the <laughs> the cold winds, and the the sun, and uh, and they've thought about. Anderson is ready to explore, as you can see. <laughs> Have a seat. I know. <laughs> He's also the talker of the bunch. He <laughs> He's a very sweet boy, and he's he's really amazing. We've, I, <laughs> we tend to be fast walkers, and he walks very fast, but has this really calm temperament, and which I I love very much about him. And I want to say thank you to Carrie and Rick as well. And uh, like I said, this has been a very humbling experience, and I'm I'm very grateful for it. Thank you again. For everyone. And I'm going to welcome Carrie to the stage. How about Anderson? He's pretty cool. <laughs> and Jake, too. Jake from Steak Farm. That's hilarious. Um, <laughs> um, it's a joy to raise, to raise Anderson was really easy. I wish I could say I did something, but I honestly didn't. And he was not my first dog. He, I think, was my third dog, um, and he was easy. He really, really was. I gave him love. I gave him a lot of love. He ne I never caught him eating anything he didn't, wasn't supposed to be, which was remarkable to me, because the dogs before, it's like, give me that shoe. Oh my gosh, what are you doing? Quit digging. Da -da -da -da. You know, doing what dogs do. I can honestly say, Anderson was just kind of knew what to do from day one. Um, you're gonna love him. Jake's family, you guys, he's going to just integrate in your family like that. And I forgot about his talking. <laughs> That's something I forgot. It's endearing. He is a sweet boy, but he will guide well. When I walked with him, I felt confident. He was just a joy. And But when we got home, he's happy to be your friend and just hang out. So congratulations. Years and years of guiding joy together and family time and all that good stuff and hopefully we can see you soon. I do live in Upland, so um, I'm happy to puppy sit for you guys if you need one. <laughs> and I do want to say, Sandy Bennett, hi in Kentucky. Thank you for sponsoring Anderson. You're a remarkable lady. Thank you. Next we have Laurel Hilbert. Laurel is 27 years old and lives in Washington, D.C. He immigrated to the U.S. from Syria in 2013 and recently became a U.S. citizen six months ago. He has worked for Senator Dianne Feinstein for four years while finishing his undergraduate degree in international relations and nuclear deterrence from Harvard University. Laurel is receiving his second guide dog. He was matched with male yellow Labrador retriever Golden Cross Sergeant, who was raised by Betty Borowski and her granddaughter Elizabeth, represented by Elizabeth. You can tell he's stubborn already. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. You all look great this morning. <laughs> he looks better. As Sydney mentioned, my name's Laurel, and uh, I want to tell you a little bit about my story. I immigrated from Syria in 2013 to the United States, where I started off in Los Angeles. I lived in Los Angeles for a little over two years and then moved to New York City for a search of more opportunities. I worked in New York for an international language school as an international outreach and admissions assistant for a couple years, and then I decided that I wanted to go back to California but was craving a new experience, so I decided to go to San Francisco, where I've lived there for a little over a year and a half. Started off a nonprofit organization called A Dignified Home Children and Youth Services to provide permanent sustainable housing to homeless youth between the ages of 12 to 24 while connecting them with foster parents to tackle the issue of homelessness long term, influenced by my own 
personal experience with homelessness for four years. And then I decided to go to Washington, D.C., where I started off as an intern in Senator Dianne Feinstein's office. Three months thereafter, the senator herself offered me to work for her as her research assistant on a wide variety of issue areas. It's been a humbling experience working for that woman who invested in me quite a lot. When I was in Los Angeles, I started off, I, I was enrolled in Glendale High School, and that's how my knowledge became of Guide Dogs of America through Nancy, my mobility instructor, who wasn't able to join us today. I was scared of dogs, and Nancy suggested, why don't we take a field trip? As a 17-year-old at the time, anything that would get me out of school is welcome. <laughs> but when she said, Guide Dogs of America, and the sentence had dogs in it, well, that was not welcome. I gave in. She said, why, won't we, why don't we just take a, a route around campus? We don't have to meet dogs or people for that matter or even be on campus. So I agreed. She started describing campus from outside. And I said, well, well why don't we check it out? Let's go in. So we did. Patty was the uh, admissions manager at the time. And Patty suggested, I'll bring a dog you, so you can, I'll, I'll control the dog, you can, you know, pet the dog and, and, that a do <laughs> he's a sergeant, he knows how to army crawl. <clears throat> um, Patty brought Honey, she was a yellow lab, her name was Honey. As I mentioned, I was really terrified of dogs, but. I petted Honey, and I walked with her, with her harness on at the time. It felt liberating. I decided to apply, and that's two years thereafter I was matched with Arrow. And I would be remiss if I don't say a few things about Arrow. Arrow was raised by the Rosenthal family, Hannah, and her family, Linda and Mike. To think of Arrow and to, is to think of love. He passed away a year and a half ago after having a heat stroke. Stayed in the hospital for a few weeks, but he didn't pull through. Without love, life can be cold and it can be cruel. Cruelty is deliberate, is the action of bullies or bigots or the inaction of those indifference to others' pain. But often, cruelty is born of life. A matter of fate or God's will beyond our moral, moral powers to comprehend. Losing Arrow was to suffer such faceless, seemingly random cruelty which can harden the softest heart or shrink the sturdiest. It can make one mean or bitter or full of self-pity. Or to paraphrase an old proverb, it can make one ask, God for a lighter burden. With the support of friends, family, and my GDA family, I was strong enough to ask God for broader shoulders. Shoulders broad enough to bear not only my own burdens, but the burdens of others. Shoulders broad enough to shield those who need shelter the most. We don't know how long we've got here, and we don't know when fate will, <laughs> would intervene. Well, we all know what these dogs around here in this room taught us is to love deeply, to help people who need help the most, and to show compassion and selflessness. And we all can learn a lesson from all these dogs. 
I'm grateful to each one of you. I'm grateful to Betty and Elizabeth who raised Sargent and to Guide Dogs of America for doing this work day in and day out. And uh, Sargent and I are flying back to DC on Sunday and uh, going back to, to the Senate on Monday. And I suspect he will be the only one who have common sense in the mix of our <laughs> political craziness. Now, do you have something to say? He said, get me off stage. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. I'm going to next invite Elizabeth on stage. Hi, my name is Elizabeth and I'm here with my wonderful family who have been with us this entire journey of being puppy raisers. Truly, my grandma Betty over here and I could have not made it as far as we have unless we had the help and the guidance of our area leaders, Brian and Nancy Matthews. They taught us how to forgive our mistakes, our own especially, and how to take pride in small victories, and most importantly, how to trust ourselves. Even when we didn't always feel like we had met the mark or done our finest, truly we thank them and our community so much. Our journey began far earlier than before January 2021 when we first picked up Sergeant. You see, my grandfather, Richard Borowski, was a sergeant in the Army while serving in Korea. Yes. And had always been in the service of the community in one way or the other. With my grandmother, they had raised many dogs together and treated them like any other family member. Seven years ago, my grandfather passed away. While reeling with the death of her husband, my grandmother unfortunately found out that her other family member, a Labrador named Sachi, was also in poor health. She sadly passed less than a year later. Devastated by the loss of her loved ones, my grandmother swore that she would never have another dog. And I think we know that that promise wasn't necessarily kept <laughs> for the better. We began our journey at the GDA program and the, chose the name Sergeant in order to honor my grandfather. Sergeant has come to inherit the same sense of duty and love for people as Sergeant Borowski once had. Like his namesake, Canine Sergeant is always eager to please, and his love for his family, and food, has no bounds. <laughs> Honestly, we couldn't have helped or hoped for another dog to raise. We were so astonished and elated to learn that our Sergeant made the program. That brought the next challenge to our family, learning to let go. Turnin was especially hard, who could blame us? And in the meantime, we wondered if anyone else could love her boy as much as us. We then met Sergeant's new owner, Laurel, and immediately knew that he was the one. His guide dog, Arrow, had also passed, and like my grandmother, he was reluctant to allow more heartbreak in his life. Yet with encouragement from family and so many others, they decided to apply. And we feel blessed that our boy will be with Laurel and that he will have such a fulfilling career. Above all, we are thankful that we had the chance to grow alongside our little sergeant. We may miss him in our hearts, but we are both excited and proud knowing that his last assignment will be with a loving home. Thank you so much. And last but not least, Priscilla Gagne. Priscilla is 37 years old and lives in Quebec, Canada with her three cats. She is a Paralympian in judo and has been practicing the sport since 2010. 
Priscilla placed fifth in the Rio Paralympic Games and second in Tokyo. She is currently training for the 2024 Paralympic Games in Paris. She loves writing, songs, running, and is a huge fan of Celine Dion. Priscilla is receiving her first guide dog. She was matched with female yellow Labrador retriever Zofia, who was raised by first by Sonia Maleka, and then by Bob and Kathy Stegman, represented by Bob. <laughs> Oh my goodness, I'm so excited and honored and humbled to be here. And like Carmela, I'd like to thank God first because it's just a miracle of life right here and that timing could not have been better. And uh, I want to thank the instructors, Sydney and Sean and Annalise and Jasmine and uh, Jamie and Kelsey, and I could list them all day, but I'm just so, my heart is just so full. A uh, huge thank you to the puppy raisers, my newfound friends, whether they like it or not. Um, Bob and Kathy, thank you so much for everything you put into her. And uh, we're two peas in a pod. You know, we're both spunky and restless, and we both play hard and both sleep hard. So it's going to be a, a really good journey, and I'm really looking forward to it. Um, so thank you. Oh, and Celine Dion, if you're watching this, uh, <clears throat> to people when I meet, you know, the nickname, she's going to be Celine. So. <laughs> I'd like to welcome Bob to the stage. Well, it's true. Good things do indeed come in small packages. Our journey with Zofia began when she joined us at the age of 10 months. She was a petite little girl with boundless energy, unlimited enthusiasm, high intelligence, insatiable curiosity, tons of personality, and a love for living life to the fullest. She came to us already knowing so much. Plus, <laughs> she had a great house manners and enjoyed long rides in the car. Now it was up to, up to us to continue her training by giving her new out and about public experiences and to keep shaping and honing her skills. And this girl loved to go out anywhere, anytime. There was just no slowing her down. She loves being active, and above all, she loves having fun. Yeah, she may have been a challenge at times, but then again, what puppy isn't? Yes, there were some hurdles along the way, but these were quickly overcome and outweighed by her many successes and achievements. This ultimately made her one of the most fulfilling accomplishments of our 23 years of puppy raising. Eight months later, the time came for Zofia to be <laughs> turned in for a formal training. We had taken her along her journey as far as we could. She was definitely ready to, for something new and challenging. We were done with our part in her journey, and now it's up to the trainers to develop her working skills. After taking her entrance exams, it was determined that she would follow the guide dog track. Letters to home frequently arrived by mail. We anxiously awaited them. It was always good to hear how she was progressing, mastering new skills, developing into a solid, dependable guide. Earlier this year, she came back and visited for a while while the kennel was going some, uh, undergoing some repairs. It was great to visit with her and to see how much she had grown and how she had matured. Then, to see how eager she was and excited just to get back to the kennel so she could continue her training, this girl definitely needed a job to do. In early January, we received word that after five months of training, Zofia had successfully completed her final exams and had her earned her guide dog degree. Way to go, Zo. Now we waited to hear who she'd been matched with so her adventures could really begin. I don't know how you do it, but somehow the trainers always make the perfect match. Priscilla, we've learned, is also a boundless energy, unlimited enthusiasm, high intelligence, insatiable curiosity, tons of personality, and a love for life. It was a joy to meet you the other night and to see how well suited you and Zofia are to each other. You're two sides of the same coin, a two-legged and four-legged version of the same persona. <laughs> you have already started melding as a team and have so many travels and adventures ahead of you, so many plans and memories to make over the coming years. We can't wait to see what adventures await you. 
In closing, I would like to share a quote from the great sage, Winnie the Pooh. I knew when I met you, an adventure was going to happen. We wish you the best of everything, and may your six legs take you far. Okay. Uh, from Zofi's first puppy raiser, Sensei, Zofia, you are a blessing in our lives. We will always love you. I want to congratulate class 423. You have officially completed guide dog training class, and you are ready to start your journeys together. Good luck. Thank you. So I had a, a, a unique opportunity in this class. You guys have probably heard people mentioning Annalise and Jasmine. I'm going to actually have them come up on stage. We've got two new apprentices that we just hired. So this is Jasmine and this is Annalise. Uh, they had the unique opportunity in this class to go and do their blindfold experience. So they went through class just as a student for the first week of class. Um, and I had the opportunity to work with them and spend a little bit more time with class than I normally do. So it was very exciting, but just wanted you guys to put a name to the face and welcome these uh, guys as they will be joining our training team. And to class 423, Jake from State Farm. <laughs> he actually does own khakis, just in case everybody was wondering. <laughs> um, it was a pleasure spending time with you guys. Um, you guys have been troopers. The amount of rain that we had to go through in this class, I said, I didn't sign up for this, guys. Um, Sean, you're gonna have to take over. It's raining outside. Um, you guys made it. We are so excited for you. We look forward to all the adventures uh, that you guys will be sharing with us and wish you the best of luck. So congratulations. At this time, I am, we'll give them one bit more big round of applause and then I'm gonna ask everybody to remain seated and we're gonna excuse them so they can go get their dogs a little potty break. So let's give them one more big round of applause. So as they are exiting, uh, you know, we're always